Cyberpunk 2077 has definitely been through its ups and downs, from an absolutely horrendous and bug-filled launch that in many ways to this day has destroyed the reputation of one of the most trusted game developers, to a game constantly notioned with a praise and an expansion that exceeds the base game in almost all of its facets. It's had an absolutely crazy story, and I think CDPR as well as us, the fans, are quite happy with what the game has turned out to be. The game has pivoted much towards the the original vision set out by the developers, although the core is something that could never be changed. It has been almost three years since I first played the game, as I would first enter the trenches of Night City during the release weeks of the game, and despite the bugs and glitches of which I experienced much of, I left with a very profound experience that I've remembered almost all the way until my replay of the game. After the 2.0 update and purchasing the Phantom Liberty expansion, I decided to jump in, and all I can say is if you haven't bought the game and experienced it for yourself with its renewed frame, I urge you to purchase the game and its expansion and delve into the intricate and beautiful Night City. Much of what I remember from playing the game in its release weeks in terms of specific gameplay systems and the more prominent story beats has remained with me up until my replay, which made it even more bizarre how different the game is now. I'll quickly preface now that all the gameplay shown doesn't contain spoilers, and when I discuss story sections, I'll just use trailers for the game to showcase my point. Let's quickly outline the damn beauty of this game. I don't remember the game ever looking this good during my initial playthrough but with the added features of ray tracing and lighting that is so well designed and realistic, the game itself is a marvel in graphical fidelity. Until playing the game, I honestly thought that my favourites such as Red Dead Redemption 2 and The Last of Us Part 2 would outshine the prowess of cyberpunk's vastly lit city, but I was wrong on so many levels. Just the gameplay clips I've been showing of me driving around Night City is a testament to how amazing this game looks on every level and in every aspect. Aspect. Night City is one of the best in the industry, and arguably Cyberpunk 2077 might be the best looking game I've ever played on so many metrics. The once T-posing agendas of the scarce crowds have changed with much more reactive and dense crowds. I find it hard not to hit civilians when drifting my vehicle, or running through the crowd involves a lot of shoving around and jumping around. The neon signs that light the city at night create a level of immersion unmatched by much in the gaming industry, as the game truly encapsulate the cyberpunk vibe it was foremostly created and forged with. In addition to the graphical fidelity of the game, even the UI system has been updated, with it changing a lot with different skill trees being added, all easy to understand, and an inventory system that isn't overly complex or overly simple, leaning right into the RPG roots of the game itself. Surely, if you're looking for a game that will star strike you with how gorgeous it looks and the immersion it will serve you, Cyberpunk's dystopian world will drag you into the hungry streets of Night City, in a game that blows me away every time I play play it in how amazing it always looks. I want to also talk about the combat system of this game. Even before the various revamps that came with the 2.0 update and with Phantom Liberty, I honestly think that the customization and robust systems of the game itself lent to a combat system that was super fun. Something about the pure abundance of different weapons available to you at every point in the game, in addition to the abundant customization that comes with the RPG of this stature, allows you to really customize every component of the combat, making it an absolute immersive and practically fun experience. Cyberpunk's combat may be cut up into the components of its simple shooting and melee action, in addition to the net running or hacking that you can do throughout the game, to better even the odds with the range of enemies you'll be facing. I noticed that on my first playthrough of the game during its release window, I barely utilized the hacking components, only really sticking to my weapons both firearms and melee, and I found no real use for the hacking components in order to fight my enemies, because the difficult difficulty didn't really warrant it. I really recommend playing the game on hard mode because of this. It's not as bad as you think and it kind of forces you to be a little more strategic, mostly in how you're going to be prioritizing hacking in some encounters in order to ensure that your enemies are constantly disadvantaged and that the shooting and melee action that will be occurring will be completely in your favor. Honestly, if you really take heed to the hacking within the combat scenarios of the game, in addition to the fact you'll be constantly changing what katana you are using 
shooting or what shotgun is best in the game as you constantly find better items and weapons throughout the game you'll see yourself having a bunch of fun with the game's combat system with the hacking parts of it really adding to the immersion of the game in its cyberpunk setting there's some super wacky weapons in the game and you'll have a load of fun just messing around with different weapons that you can collect finding out what quick hacks would be best for what encounter and overall I highly recommend the game based on the aspects of its combat system alone I think I'll also quickly touch on the stealth components of the game as in many encounters it's quite feasible to do stealth if you want to the utilization of hacking is essential for stealth in this game as turning off cameras or lowering enemies to where you are to silently take them out is essential to being a stealthy player in this game I haven't really used stealth that much as I find more fun messing around with the game's other systems in direct combat but it is a path you may go on and it's fleshed out enough for you to really enjoy your playthrough in that way even in a way that isn't lethal which can make it even more fun the traversal in the game is a lot of fun as well you've got so many vehicles to choose from and with a game as good looking as cyberpunk 2077 I saw myself never fast traveling anywhere because taking in the vistas of this heartless city was a lot more immersive and fun there's so many damn vehicles to choose from and although I won't be showing much of them as to not ruin the surprise for you trust me the driving in this game handles well and making your way around night city never feels like a chore from mission to mission but rather an expansive way to truly live in night city to understand its people and to take in all of the glory you try to claim throughout your extensive journey in this place fast travel in the world of cyberpunk 2077 almost feels like a sin as to truly take in the amazing world built by cdpr driving and walking around this city is almost a must in every facet in addition to the traversal which there isn't much to say about as it's mainly just driving and walking around the city the fixed and revamped police systems of the game can make the traversal a lot more fun accidentally hitting into civilians while driving around is something you'll constantly experience throughout the game but the enhanced systems of police chasers with them setting up roadblocks in addition to the vehicle combat that has now been added to the game you'll see yourself having a lot of fun traversing around night city in a very chaotic fashion before we conclude I want to briefly discuss the story of cyberpunk 2077 of course without any spoilers so this will be fairly short as it's hard to discuss the brunt of my points without utilizing spoilers I can say this with absolute confidence however cyberpunk 2077 is easily one of the most well written and well constructed video game stories I've ever played I think this is most importantly apparent through the game's Phantom Liberty expansion where the characters there are so damn fleshed out and so well written that it blew me away with the absolute quality of CDPR's writing ability. The choices that you can make in the game may not be as impactful as you'd want in some areas, but in some other areas and scenarios, these choices you make throughout the game truly does impact the broader story of the game itself and the interactions and relations you build with the game's vast and supremely written cast of characters. The characters of Cyberpunk 2077 and its expansion are absolutely superb, and you can tell how much effort CDPR put into building and fleshing out these characters to ensure you understood their motives that it truly felt like they were a part of this world and that they struggled within it i just finished the story of the expansion and i was struck sitting there looking at the credits as the decisions i'd made throughout the dlc encapsulated in a spectacular ending that i didn't expect the game itself in every component is also a marvel in writing and cdpr's writing ability never fails to impress me in the game i wish i could say more but without spoilers it's almost impossible if you enjoyed this video i'll be releasing a long form 30 minute critique and analysis of the game in a couple weeks and so you'll be able to hear my in-depth thoughts about the game in all of its facets if you enjoyed this video consider liking the video and dropping a sub and until next time peace